Right now, for more on the government's involvement in helping the airlines stay solvent, let's bring in Harry Wilson. He's Mava Group founder and CEO, and you may remember he served on President Obama's auto task force, so he has been through restructurings before and has seen how this played out. Harry, it's good to see you this morning. Good to see you, Becky. Good morning. What do you think about the situation with the airlines and the help that they're potentially getting from the government? Uh, obviously, some of them um, a little concerned about whether to take the deal and what it means. Yeah, well, there's, there's a couple things to think about. The first is, obviously, there is a there is a private market solution, unlike in 2009, because for now, the credit markets are mm -hmm. wide open. Uh, and so the airlines could go down that road. There are two big challenges with that. The first is the likelihood that that will get them through the crisis absent a V-shaped recovery is pretty low. So they'll probably be back in the same position this summer in all likelihood. And the second is the government's terms are actually, are, I think, quite company friendly. Um, they have you know, very low interest rates, very little equity dilution. Uh, given that this uh, aid is really more a function of the pandemic rather than mismanagement as the 0809 crisis is more of an issue, I think that's not inappropriate, but it's actually pretty company friendly. What what happens if, as you suggest, we, we don't see a V-shaped recovery, if we don't see big numbers of people going back to flying towards the middle or into the summer? Yeah, well, I think this is the central issue that not enough people are talking about, is that um, obviously the first and foremost issue is the public health crisis, and we need to attack that as vigorously and as aggressively and as quickly as possible. Um, but when we get to the other side of this, um, I think unless people feel confident that their jobs will remain intact, and that they can go out of their house without um, significant health risk, demand will be uh, really uh, subdued. And I think it really comes back to how do we solve the public health crisis as quickly as possible in a way that people feel comfortable. Obviously, treatment's kind of first and foremost. But the absence of demand recovery, the only thing the airlines and other consumer-facing businesses can do is do everything they can to preserve the safety of their passengers or customers. So, for example, um, testing at security or uh, at least temperature checks, um, obviously uh, social distancing on the plane, uh, things like that that need to be done in order to kind of get people comfortable that they will be safe on an airplane or at a restaurant or any other uh, establishment. For you, One is, how should we think about the Treasury making money or, I imagine in this case, not off of this program? Yeah, look, unlike, I think, the bank, unlike the bank loans, for example. Yeah, no, it's, it's a hugely different situation, right? I think it was appropriate for Treasury to be commercially uh, uh, focused in 2008 and 2009 because the problems we were trying to solve were largely self-inflicted in the banking and auto sector. And it was appropriate to have consequences associated with that. In this case, the vast majority of problems are driven by the pandemic, which obviously is not self-inflicted. And so in, in that world, the question is, what's the goal we're trying to solve? And I would argue that the goal we're trying to solve is to preserve the livelihoods of as many Americans as possible who are unwitting victims of this global pandemic, and to do it as, as cost-effectively as possible and as quickly as possible, but not, per se, to be uh, as commercially minded as we were in 08 and 09. And so I think that's a fundamental what distinction. What about the... Right. Go ahead, Andy. How do you think about the, the quote unquote morality of taking the money, especially companies that, that might be better funded than others? We were talking earlier this morning about Shake Shack actually returning the money, uh, given the financial position they're in. But we were also talking about how Harvard University, with its $41 billion endowment, took $9 billion from the government. Clearly, obviously, they're going to have losses and they want to keep people employed. So you can understand that on one end. But you also look at the endowment on the other end and you say, there are people who are much more in need than that. Sure. So a couple things. One, uh, obviously, PPP was too small. And I'd said that to people at the time. It needs to be much larger and they move much more quickly because there are struggling entrepreneurs who are investing their entire careers in their restaurant or their dry cleaning establishment who aren't going to make it because government in action. So that's, that's a fundamental uh, piece of this. I think, secondly, obviously, as a general matter, if you don't need the government money or if there's a private sector alternative, you shouldn't take the government money. Um, and so that's, that's uh, a function of just kind of really kind of contributing uh, as a citizen to, to the crisis. But the last piece of this is, is there will be, you know, um, extraordinary losses. There already have been, obviously. And the question uh, becomes for the government, in terms of this question of the cost of it, is what are we trying to preserve? And again, I go back to the same principle of trying to preserve as many jobs as possible, which is mostly going to be focused on small business, 
because larger businesses have generally more options. Harry, again, how would the stakes of this change if this goes on for an extended period of time and if even after the government lifts all restrictions, it turns out that people don't feel comfortable or they're worried about having enough um, money or job security to be able to start flying like we used to. If, if we're looking at a new normal sort of earnings picture for these airlines, what will the government do? How, how, what's the second stage of this all look like? If this time around it's been relatively friendly to the companies because they didn't do anything wrong, you just question how long does the government continue to try and, and support all of that? Or, or are there new solutions that you would expect to see a leg down? Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a hugely important question, Becky, and and it that it just goes to the fundamental issue of needing to get through this as quickly as possible. And just to be clear, what I mean by that, it's it's I'll give you an example. So there are some promising uh, treatments out there. We've talked about in Bisavir, obviously, but there are others. Um, uh, the challenge with all of them is not just efficacy, which is obviously the first and fundamental question, but the second question is: Is there enough capacity to get them out broadly so that people feel safe? Right. And that's something, for example, the government can be investing in today. Bill Gates has been doing this, but obviously the government has far more resources to increase capacity today for promising treatments so that some of them will ultimately not succeed, obviously. But those that do succeed can be rolled out much more quickly. And it comes back to your question of to the extent we have treatments that can be done in capacity that are successful, that will be the, the single most important thing to getting people confident to getting back in the air or in restaurants, et cetera. Um, but that's, 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 that's why I think so much of the focus has to be on what we look like on the other side and how can we move as quickly there as possible given the public health constraints, which obviously are first and foremost.